All right, this is gonna be a fun one. We're gonna be talking about this kudava right here. Before I start though, I need to apologize for being such an unprincipled bitch because when this character came out, I made a lot of noise about not buying her. I was like, I'm not gonna support them by buying any more DLC. And now look at me. What happened was there's been a lot of interesting talk about this character recently and I had a couple of ideas that I just really wanted to test. I wanted to do some labbing, but as you know, you're not allowed to do that unless you buy the character first, even though you really should be able to do that. So now, once again, Namco have my lunch money. I bought her yesterday. I did my testing and I found some really interesting stuff that I would like to share. I think there's some sinister stuff going on under the hood with this character. It's not immediately obvious just why she's so good. And she's very good. Uh, Ni recently called her the number one best character in the game. And we have some other top players in Asia release lists and they all place her in the number one spot. So above Akuma, above Devil Jin, above Fakum Lam. Uh, the number one character in the game. So it seems as though the best character is, again, the latest character. Uh, but why is she, is she so powerful? Because it is kind of subtle. And I think Lydia is a bit of a rushdown character. She has a really high rate of attack, and she's always on you. But when you uh, fight against a typical rushdown character like maybe Nina, uh, the fact that they're attacking so much is also kind of their weakness because there will be opportunities in there to uh, move out, to move to the side, to parry a low, to duck a high, and then you try and punish them really hard and kill them before they stand back up and put you back in the blender. It's how a match like that usually goes. But with Lydia, I feel like she uh, actually specializes in that as well as blocking. I think she's very solid on defense, and I think she's uh, blocking all the time. It's very difficult to find opportunities um, to actually hurt her. And that has to do with her speed. But what do I mean when I say speed? Because you look at her jams, and they're 10 frames to impact, same as all other characters. Her down forward one is 13 frames, you know, same as all other characters. Um, but there are some different kinds of speed that we're going to go into. And I think I want to start by talking about the concept of recovery speed. It's kind of a misunderstood concept because you look at this string right here, it hits and it's uh, plus eight, right? Uh, that is not a measurement of the recovery speed of this move. When we're looking at plus frames, you know, uh, advantage or disadvantage, that is a... Um, it's an interaction between two characters and we compare the point in time when the characters can take their next action, essentially when they can go back to blocking. And if I do that three frames faster than the other character, then I'm plus three. So in theory, if I had some sort of giant move where I just punch Leo into the ground right here and I incapacitate my opponent for like 15 minutes, but Lydia's hand really hurts, so she's standing around for 15 minutes as well and can't do anything. And then Lydia recovers just one frame faster than Leo and can block one frame faster than Leo. That move would still be plus one. Uh, but with recovery speed, that's you know a factor whether a move connects and interacts with the opponent or not. And an interesting way we can illustrate that and do some testing is by nullifying um, the interaction uh, by using armor moves, right? So I want to uh, illustrate this by talking about uh, this string right here as my example. So you have a 13 frame uh, to impact mid poke with a duckable high extension. This is very standard tech and stuff. Many characters in the game have something super similar to this. But let's uh, switch to another character that has something, um, you know, uh, similar and, and do a little bit of testing. We could start with uh, Eliza, who has down forward uh, one four. And I'm gonna be switching characters a bit right here. We're gonna do some testing together. And uh, this is what I was doing all day yesterday. But again, 13 frame down forward one, duckable high extension, looks very similar, right? Um, let's uh, record uh, something for Leo to do right here. We're gonna do uh, uh, one jab and then I'm gonna spam out a power crush, right? So Leo's gonna do a one jab and then power crush. I'm gonna block the jab and then I'm gonna try and stick this string on the power crush and recover so I can block the, the impact of the power crush. So let's block the move, uh, put it to play. So I block this move and then I'm gonna do my string. And as you can tell, I'm not able to block right here. I do my string as fast as I can, I'm spamming it out, but Elisa is going to eat that hit every single time. Uh, let's go to another character that has something similar. Uh, one character that has a fantastic move in this category is Negan. Uh, 
very fast, very, uh, very good tracking. It says down for 1-1. One, one. And we're going to record the exact same thing. I'm going to have to do that over and over as well, I'm afraid. But it's uh, one jab, spam out the power crush. We're going to do uh, down for 1-1. One, one. And again, I'm going to eat the hit every single time. Okay, I'm not able to block. Right, let's look at one more character just to show you that I'm not cherry picking this. I've gone through the entire roster more or less. Um, this is something that, you know, generally characters just aren't able to do. Bob has another fantastic move in this category. It's, it's his uh, back to two, 13 frame mid poke, duckable high extension, right? Uh, we're gonna record the exact same example again. So one jab, spam out the power crush. I'm gonna block the jab and see if I can block the power crush after doing my uh, string. Doesn't work, right? And we could keep going, I've, you know, you can test Katarina has down for 1-1, one, one. it's the exact same thing over and over. Let's go back to Lydia and do some testing on a couple of her strings, right? And again, sorry for the downtime in between here, but here we go. Um, so same example, uh, one jab, spam out the power crush as fast as we can. We're gonna do her down forward uh, one, two again. So we're blocking the jab. Gonna try and get it out a little bit faster here. There you go. So this is good recovery speed in action, right? Lydia actually recovers so quickly here, even though she isn't interacting with Leo because of the armor, that she's able to stick attacks uh, during that animation and then go back to blocking uh, before the impact comes. And this is her, uh, an example of her very, very good recovery speed that she has on a bunch of her moves. So what this means is that when Lydia is attacking really fast, um, when an opportunity presents itself to actually take a turn for the opponent, it closes so quickly that they're usually not able to take it. But there are other ways in which Lydia is extremely fast. I want to talk about something that I think people really miss when they're looking at moves in this game. Because, okay, so you see a string and you want to know something about the string. What information as a Tekken player are you looking at? You want the impact speed, you want to know if the hits are high or low or mid, you want to know about counter hit properties, and then how good or bad is it on block, right? But something that we almost never look at is impact speed of subsequent hit in strings. So the second hit right here, you can tell it actually impacts at 16 frames. And for an extension to a down forward one, that is actually very, very fast. It's one of the fastest uh, examples of this in the entire game. I think the only character we looked at that is similar here is Negan. Everybody else is slower. Some of them are quite a lot slower. Uh, and if you think about that, when you look at these strings, that means that when Lydia is applying a string, it becomes more and more difficult to react to, right? Um, think about this one, two, for example. First, it is 10, of course, because it's a jab, but the second hit is also 10, meaning that this animates for a total or uh, the second it impacts after 20 frames. 20 frames is just about the barrier for what is reactable to a human being, which means that this entire sequence here is uh, unreactable, right? You look at some other good jab strings in the game and the second hit will sometimes be not 10 frames to impact, but you know, 12, 13, 14, sometimes 18 or even more, meaning that the opponent can look at it and know what it is uh, before it's done impacting, right? And then they can make decisions uh, based on that, you know, what they want to do defensively. Um, so not only is it very difficult to keep up, at with and see what Lydia is doing while she's doing it. If you have an opportunity, it closes so quickly that usually you don't have the time to take it and she's back to blocking. And that is what creates this feeling of a wall just moving towards you when you're playing against her. Also has to do with the fact that she has ridiculous, um, she moves forwards really, really far when she's attacking. And if you look at the range of the second hit of this thing, for example, I mean, you wouldn't think that it would hit from out here, but it like uh, comfortably will. So she, uh, walks you down, doesn't really present you with any opportunities, and everything is happening so quickly that it's very difficult to react to or do anything about. And that's especially true uh, online, but you know, definitely offline as well. Again, she's considered the best tournament character in the game, right? Um, the only, and this one jab, by the way, I think 
is probably one of the most powerful games in the, uh, or powerful moves in the entire game. This one jab here is absolute insanity. The extensions are crazy. We're going to talk a little bit about counter hits now, but just to um, show you how much this uh, jab low profiles, it's essentially uh, a mid in a lot of ways. It just ignores um, crush property. So let's go to Bob as an example. We can have Bob on this side as well. And I'm going to show you a classic, classic Bob setup that all Bob players use all the time. It's up for it, one plus two, four, uh, and then you do um, an armor move. So let's record that happening here. Like that, you've seen it before. It's how we get wall splats when we play Bob. If I, my Bob on the left side here, try and jab into this after the block, you can tell that Bob is going to go under the jab crushing that easily and it basically doesn't matter what character we use here um feng is another good you know uh pokey sort of a character just show it again uh again i'm not cherry picking this i've gone through everything i wasted a lot of time on this yesterday um and we can record this setup again we play it out and we try and jab again with feng and i get crushed bob just goes under it right uh, let's uh, move back to Lydia. Uh, record the exact same setup one more time. Just to show you, the power of this jab is insane. It's easily one of the best moves. Um, so here we go. Record, same setup. Spam off the power crush as fast as we can. Look at that. Not only uh, does Lydia have a low hitting enough jab, that she can hit Bob right here, no problem. She also recovers quickly enough that she can block the hit that happens. So she can actually attack into a power crush, which, which slows down the animation and gives her time to react to it. And then she can understand that it's happening, go back to blocking and recover so quickly that she's able to block the attack, right? Um, I think the only character I tested yesterday that has um, a jab that low was uh, Kazumi. She can do something similar. And if you look at the um, impact speed of the second hit of her 1-2, you can see that it's 10-10, right? Um, the only other characters that have that in the game, as far as I know, are like uh, Mishimas or uh, Kazumi and Lars. There might be a couple more. So this is, you know, very difficult to react to, a total of 20 frames. But the difference is that those Mishima characters don't have the insane extensions that Lydia has. Uh, for example, they don't have this cataclysmically powerful counter hit launcher attached, mid counter hit launcher attached to their one jab, right? Uh, they don't have anything like that. They don't have anything like her uh, other, you know, close range pokes. They also don't have the most busted uh, falling leaf uh, in the history of the game. Uh, so this this jab is, is absolutely insane. The extensions are very powerful, but she has lots of stuff like this. And again, she's walking you down and walking you down. A couple of these things are, um, the powerful moves that she uses are block punishable. Uh, usually the ones that are these powerful counter hits. So you've got the 1-1, one, one, you've got the down forward 1-3, um, you've got the, I think, back 2-3. So you have second hits in these strings that are extremely powerful counter hit mids and she does, you know, 70, 80 damage when she connects with these. Another reason to just stand there and watch her and not try and interrupt her and it's why her poking becomes e even more threatening. But you think, okay, maybe this is an opportunity to hurt her. I'll wait for her to do the mid mix up uh, one of her counter hits right here. I'll block that and then I'll punish her. You can't do that against Lydia because as she's walking you down, whenever she wants to, she can apply some completely ridiculous lows. This um, Hell Sweep Falling Leaf, I call them Falling Leaves when they don't come out of, of uh, crouch dashes, is ridiculously powerful. Why did they bother giving it a clean hit property, by the way? Because uh, the tip range is like out here and you still get the clean hit maximum range is like clean hit range maybe just to make you think that the move actually has a weakness when it doesn't really uh, but the big thing to notice about this apart from like, the oki is ridiculous as well but if we uh keep looking at you know analogs in different characters a character that has a very important and, and powerful falling leaf is um our old friend leo here thing about leo is that if you look at the uh impact speed it is so much slower. So we go to, uh, we can just go to the record so we can get control of Leo here. So this move right here, as you can tell, the first hit is at 20 frames to impact, but with Lydia, 
it's uh, 16, so it's much, much faster. Leo also uh, actually has to get clean hits, but also knocks you away really far, whereas Lydia will put you at an awkward angle right at her feet, and she has very powerful Oki, she can just keep on trucking. Uh, she also gets a little bit more damage to just add insult to injury. Uh, before I move on, something that I forgot to mention about mid-extensions, because we're talking a lot about this string, Think about all the characters that have these. Down forward one into high extension that we looked at and down forward one into power mid extension. So if we think about uh, uh, Katarina, she doesn't have anything. Um, Elisa has uh, a mid extension that has countered properties, but all you get is a guaranteed ass smash for like 30, 40 damage. Negan's extension is natural, but has no counter properties. They're all uh, punishable on block, by the way. But you go to Lydia, not only do you have this power mid right here, it's about as dangerous to apply as all of those mids in terms of getting block punished, but the difference is that when she gets her counter hit, you know, the world ends, and it's so much damage. Uh, so these are some of the reasons. I think this is sort of the package and the interaction between different things that make her feel so incredibly fast, making her pretty much a rushdown turtle. She's walking you down all the time. It's difficult to see and react to what she's doing. Any opportunity she presents closes really quickly and you constantly have to worry about very powerful counter hits. So you're worried about interrupting her or trying to take any kind of turn or applying counter hits of your own. And then you turtle up and try and be defensive against her and she just happens to have the single most powerful can opener in the entire game on top of that. And I think that's why she becomes so oppressive. So it really isn't about, you know, people like to talk about how she closes the gap and all of that, and about her stance mix-ups, I think it's more about this constant poking pressure that just keeps coming, uh, and it's just a little bit too uh, fast for us to keep up with. So those are my thoughts on Lydia. Hopefully that made sense. We were jumping all over the place, but like I said, I did a, a lot of testing on her uh, yesterday and learned a lot of things. One thing I will say, having tested all of this, is that controlling Lydia feels absolutely amazing. These are some of the best animations, some of the coolest attacks, some of the most fun to do things I've ever seen on a Tekken character. I can see why people love this character. I would honestly love to play her unless she had all these balance issues. Um, I think it's no secret that Lydia was based on an actual uh, Japanese karate practitioner called um, Usami Rika or Rika Usami, and if you look at her doing kata and stuff, she's famous for actually snapping her hands and punching so quickly that there are like audible snaps in the air. But when you think about that, it's kind of like a whip crack. You know, it's not only about punching really fast, it's about when you retract um, your hands as well to create those snaps, right? And I think that's probably something that they were trying to emulate when they created Lydia, she should look and feel like she's that quick w with her karate punches, but it just, ended up being, I mean, maybe intentionally, they probably made her too good intentionally, but maybe that's the reason they felt like a lot of her attacks uh, have to have this insane recovery speed on them, and then it uh, ended up creating all these issues. But you could really look at just slowing down and adding frames to a lot of subsequent um, animations and strings, uh, slowing down her um, recovery speed, and then slowing down, I think, or nerfing in some way this uh, falling leaf right here and you could find a way of, of balancing her. And I think if you did, I mean, it's just one of the coolest characters ever. So uh, it's a bit of a shame what happened to her. Uh, hopefully the video makes sen uh, made sense. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you guys again very soon.